Hi, welcome to Green Rivers Multicultural Children's Picture Books. And this is week eight, and we are talking about food, how to bridge the cultural gap using food. And I wanted to just share a little story about uh, one time I was teaching first grade and we had a little girl who is ja of Japanese descent and she was eating her culturally normal food for her. I think she was eating seaweed or something. And, uh, and she probably had some sushi because she often had sushi with tofu. And another little boy who just had never been exposed to it. He wasn't mean or anything. He just, he made a comment like, ugh, what kind of food is that? Not meaning to offend, just curious. And he, his reaction was, he was unfamiliar with it. And so his reaction was one of um, almost disdain, although I know he didn't mean it that way. Well, the little girl got her feelings very hurt and burst into tears and said, he thinks my food is gross. And of course he didn't think that, he just had never been exposed to it. And so what we did was we made a sushi bar because I said, you know, anytime you're around food that you've never been around before, it just seems different. And, you know, it doesn't mean that it's bad or good. Maybe your taste buds think that it doesn't taste that great. It's not something that you're a fan of. That's okay. Or maybe your taste buds say, oh, I can't believe I've never had this before. I have to try it. So we had a we had a big fun sushi making experience and the children got to bring in things to add to sushi. Some of the children brought even they even brought things like octopus and stuff that you wouldn't normally see. And it was really fun watching children cut up like little octopus tentacles and putting the tentacles in their sushi roll and learning how to roll it up and and cut it and eat it with with the um, uh, chopsticks. And from then on, this little guy was a huge fan of sushi and loved Japanese food. So you can really truly bridge cultural gaps just by trying new foods. And what better way to bridge those gaps than with food? Because of course, as humans, we all love to eat. We all love to try new things. I remember I had never tried pho and that's a Vietnamese food. I believe it's Vietnamese. And um, my friend, my friend was like, Kelly, seriously, you've never tried pho. You have to go try pho. And so she took me out and it is now my absolute favorite go-to. So whenever my husband and I decide to Uber Eats, you know, in this world of COVID, I always 100% of the time get pho. And so uh, that's because somebody introduced it to me, thankfully. So we need to just, you know, let children try new things. Their taste buds are not fully developed, of course, so they, they're resistant to trying new things. But if you just offer it and they take a taste, that's enough. So I have so many books that talk about foods in a culture, culturally relevant way. So you can bring these books to the children and then they'll be more apt to try it. So we've literally made fry bread and the children eat it all up. In fact, last year in this very class, that's what I made when I brought in food and we read this book. <laughs> and I also read my Kokum called today. And we read these two books and then we made fry bread and you guys all got to taste it. Well, not you guys, but last year's class. <laughs> Um, this is another great one, Clever Sticks. I always read this when we do our sushi making, and we do this every year, sushi making. Everybody brings noodles. That's a great one. Everybody bakes bread. <laughs> everybody serves soup. And everybody cooks rice. There are certain types of foods that just bridge all the cultural gaps, don't they? Soup, bread, uh, rice, noodles. You can find them in all different cultures. Kikuchi's Sushi is another great book that I read when it's sushi making time. So that's a fun one. 
Um, I just read this book, The Runaway Walk, to my classroom, and then we made fried rice in a walk, which was really fun. This was for our Lunar New Year. And then I also like to read a variety of books on the same topic. So these are all surrounding stone soup. The, I think it was originally a Hungarian folk tale. And so here's one version. Here is another version of stone soup. Here's another version. This is in a, that's depicting a multi-ethnic global village. This is the, I think the original, yep. The three hungry soldiers. It's based on an old French tale. Oh, French, okay. I thought it was Hungarian. This stone soup setting is in Japan. Ah, I'm sorry, not Japan. It's in You'd think I'd know this by heart. <laughs> it's about the three monks instead of the three soldiers. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll read it to you today and find out. And then this is this is actually a really hilarious one. It's called The Real Story of Stone Soup. And this is set in China. So it's kind of funny to do a compare and contrast with this well-loved fable and uh, or folktale, I should say and see how different um, cultures respond to the same story. So use food, cook, share, read books about it, and um, have fun. All right. Have a great one.